Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here of the Raptors Digest, reacting to some massive Kawhi Leonard news. Riker, Jabari Young, uh, NBA reporter, has come out and said that the Kawhi Leonard is coming to the Toronto Raptors with an open mind and his future will be dictated by success. <laughs> so the Raptors have a very strong team. You know, you can check out all of our videos reacting to or predicting what the Raptors will do with Kawhi Leonard. Just what are your what are your thoughts on this news coming out about Kawhi Leonard? Well, it makes sense that there would be discussions or, you know, the possibility of Kawhi staying. It it doesn't it, it seems weird to me that Kawhi would want to given the choice between a successful team with a a, re a reasonable chance of going to the finals. Right. Some people believe that the Boston Celtics are better. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we just made the video claiming that they're not. So, I mean, there's a, a high probability of getting to the finals, whereas in the West on the Lakers or the Clippers, there's a very low chance of going to the finals. Of course, LeBron mm -hmm. is on the team, yep. but I mean, you still have that power powerhouse Golden State. You have the Rockets. I mean, there's so much competition. It makes sense for me at least from my perspective. And of course, I don't know what it's like to be an NBA player. I, I, I know what it's like to be a basketball player, but not to be getting paid millions of dollars and to have already won a national championship. But I mean, I would assume that the comp the competitive nature is still there. And given that, plus all the things that the Raptors are doing to appease uh, Kawhi Leonard, make him as happy as possible. I mean, why not stay for that franchise? At least ride it out if there's a chance of winning. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Right, there's been a lot of things that have come out with the Raptors involving Kawhi the past week or so. And we'll get all into all that in this podcast. But Jabari Young is a reporter that has been known to be close to Kawhi Leonard's camp, and he, you know, he this isn't a report. This is just his opinion. But he believes that if the Raptors make the Eastern Conference Finals or get to the finals, that he believes that the, the Kawhi Leonard will stay. Just in his opinion, that's not an actual report. That's just his opinion from a credit reporter. So. With all the American news media and everyone saying, well, it's a it's a surefire thing, he's going to the Lakers or the Clippers, what, is, what does this mean coming from a guy, because this is really the first report we've heard, right? We've speculated that we think Kawhi will fall in love with the city and, you know, fall in love with the franchise. Obviously, Masai Ujiri is a great, great GM with dealing with players and building relationships. But this is the first actual report we've really heard that Kawhi is open to a future with the Toronto Raptors. So throwing out the Eastern Conference Finals and the Finals, I, that's very encouraging as a Toronto Raptors fan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, the one point that you made, though, on Masai Jerry being great at developing relationships, I think, you know, fans of DeMar DeRozan will say he's also probably good at destroying <laughs> relationships as well. But I, I certainly I certainly agree with what you're saying. Um Mm -hmm. and, and like I, like I just mentioned in the past we we believe that you know this is a good city this is a good franchise of course they have all the assets that it takes they were the number one seed last team they've improved the team by picking up Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green uh, you know they can only get better realistically of course the teams mm -hmm. like Boston Celtics and the 76ers they're also going to improve over the offseason but I think if you have a player that's a you know a finals MVP a championship guy one of the best two-way players if not the best in the league i mean if you have a guy like this there's no way that you know it's unreasonable to expect minimum conference finals but if not finals and then like i said with the addition mm -hmm. of getting his friend on the coaching staff some people maybe took a laugh at that saying you know like who else are they going to bring in next but getting that guy and getting danny green and having that you know our multiple hour long coach meeting where I, I would assume that Nick Nurse probably said, you know, Kawhi, what do you what what will it take to stay? What lineups do you want? I will do what it takes for you to be mm -hmm. content on this team and to actually play a full season. I mean, giving him all of that, yeah, I, I can see him I can see him definitely considering to stay, if not staying, but that's that's just my take. Of course, there's you know there's more there's more news around the reports, and it does make it more official. Like you said, this is the official report, and speculations had it that mm -hmm. Paul George yeah. was going to go to L.A. He didn't even meet with them. He just signed immediately with the Thunder. Right? Reports mm -hmm. they get it wrong all the time, and when there's so much speculation that circles around and so many rumors, it's you definitely have much more of a sense of the reality of the facts and what's actually going on when you have somebody who's like you said inside the camp, or when you have somebody that has the actual information from directly from the source or from the secondary source to say yep. this is what he's thinking right now. 
No, I 100% agree. And you mentioned that the Raptors are catering to Kawhi Leonard. They want to make this the best situation possible. They just hired his friend to the the staff, not not on the assistant coaching staff, and as like a, I believe it was a video manager. No, no, he's one player, of Kawhi's player development. Long, Jeremy Castleberry. Player, he's the uh, the player development mm-hmm. coach. The player development coach. That's his official title. Yeah. And you know, it's not. And for people that are wondering about this hiring. He wasn't. He's not an NBA. He's not a complete random that we just hired because he's Kawhi's friend. He's had experience with the Spurs. He's, you know, he has the connections with Kawhi, and it, also he's very close to Danny Green apparently. So, it's not just a random, but it's definitely a step in building a strong relationship with Kawhi Leonard. Apparently, they grew up and played uh, basketball together all growing up, childhood friends, all that sort of stuff. So, that it's great to hear that after the Raptors make a move like that, Kawhi Leonard is responding and saying that he's open to the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. So that's, that's a very well, encouraging what, thing. What do, like what, because there's been little pieces. There's been one of the most confusing or complex off-seasons, I think, just as an outsider trying to understand what is going on inside the brain of Kawhi Leonard. And we're getting now more of a sense of what his motivations are. But what are the pieces? Do you think it's a little bit of everything? Like, is money a motivation? Because obviously the Raptors can offer 190 million compared to the next team that can only offer 140, 150 million. They can offer more money. They can offer mm-hmm. a better chance yep. at getting to the the finals in the East, right? I don't know if they have the draw to get other players, but I mean, maybe Kawhi Leonard has the ability to bring in, um, you know, a Giannis Antetokounmpo or a Kevin Durant or something. I mean, this is unrealistic now, yep. but in two, three years, maybe he has the draw to bring them in. Uh, you know, a, a GM that will do anything for you. Uh, you know, bring putting your friends and the coaching staff. What what do you think it is? Is the ultimate piece, or is it just a combination of all that and and really just in the end if he enjoys the city yeah the, the toronto raptors have because if you were to pose that question five years ago then it would it'd be a tough take to say why Kawhi leonard would want to stay but ever since the mazai ujiri regime has come in we've transformed the 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 raptors have transformed themselves as a top tier organization they've already been in a top tier city you know the weather's not necessarily the best but you know, the city completely makes up for it. They have shown that they're a competent front office to put the build a team around a star player, right? And then now we've just, you know, as DeMar DeRozan's been our star in the past, I'm sure that it's going to translate with Kawhi Leonard coming up. I think just the Raptors all around are the best fit for him. And I think it would be just a not a smart move for him, as you mentioned earlier in the pod, to go out west because LA. You know, if you look at the betting polls, the Las Vegas betting polls, the only other two teams in the conversation with the Raptors are the Clippers and the Lakers. There's no, you know, there's rumors that the Nets might be a, a random destination, but I think everyone knew that was a bit bit over the top. So I think the Lakers and the Clippers are the only two teams that could possibly steal him away from us. And really, I, looking at those two situations, I, I don't see how any of those top tr- the Toronto Raptors. Yeah. No, that's true. But I mean, it, like I said, he has the ability then to play with his friends, to play at a much warmer climate, uh, you know, perhaps a more beautiful city. It depends on what you want from, a play, you know, from a city. You're in America as an American. You know, the tax situation is a lot easier. Um, there is a multitude of factors, but I, I, I feel... I think winning, winning is... A that's what I was just going to say. I Raptors. feel like mm-hmm. it's such an odd thing especially as a guy who's not a number one seed. This is a guy that is not a winner throughout his entire life. And that's not to say he's a loser, but he's not a he's not a Kobe Bryant. He's not a and he's not even the best example. He's not he's not a player who's been used to success at every level. He's been a lower uh drafted player. He's worked his way to this position now. And to, and to say that you know, the love of competition is completely out of the table and he'd be willing to sacrifice that just to, you know, just to play with his friends. I, I can't really see it. But at the same time, like how, how nasty would a, a LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard team be, especially if, you know, they get a third piece to come over or perhaps if Kyle Kuzma or Alonzo Ball develops, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. well, you mentioned Kawhi Leonard hasn't been a winner. Obviously, you know, playing with the Spurs, he's won a lot of games, but he's never, he's never been the regarded as a top you know, tier superstar on the level of LeBron James. He's never had that national attention, even though his play maybe has been recognized. Yeah. He's never been. Well, the well, main now guy. he has. He, now he has. My point was out of the draft. Yeah. He's had to work to get to the yeah, the point yeah. that he is now. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. But he's, you know, he's never had that national. Because even when he won the championship and was the finals MVP, he was still looked at as, you know, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili's regime. They, they were still the guys that were. This is now officially Kawhi Leonard's chance to prove himself to be, you know, better than LeBron and these guys. And, you know, you mentioned how well he could, you know, a team with the Lakers could be with LeBron James. LeBron James is an aging superstar, right? And, you know, if you look at almost, uh, you brought up the name Kobe Bryant, right? His trajectory, it looked like there people were calling him Vino because he gets better with age, right? <laughs> and then he okay. quickly fell off the map, right? So we don't really know how long LeBron has left being at the, the top of the league, right? Obviously, the Clippers just, that would, the Clippers don't have it nearly a, as a comparable roster. I don't think they'd be, you know, they'd be fighting to make the, a top seed, not nonetheless coming out of the West with Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. So I think the Lakers are the only talent wise, but do you really see, because Le- with LeBron aging and do you th- see Kyle Kuzma or Lonzo Ball becoming a superstar? I, Cause I personally don't No, And I, I, I mean, I don't want to speculate on that. That's not really the point of the conversation. Yeah. It's just, yeah, no, it's interesting now, but I, I, I think that there's, we still don't know for sure. What it is that Kawhi mm-hmm. Leonard, what what it is that will take for Kawhi Leonard's mind to be convinced that this is the proper market for him, and I think that as the season progresses, and if he plays, and if the team can win, and then he gets the whole Raptors fan base behind him, and he gets the coaching staff behind mm-hmm. him, and the bench mob behind him, and they get the success that he has in the Spurs, except without all of the other competition in the West. Of course, Boston 76ers are there, but if he has sort of an easier path to the championship or to the finals, I, I mean, I, I, there is a convincing argument, and that's to be said. Now, I want to talk quickly, though, about, unless you want to conclude here now, um, about Danny. Yeah, uh, there's one. There's one question I just wanted to propose yeah. before before we break away from this combo, yeah. right? So the the thing that that has been brought up is the Eastern Conference Finals and the Finals, right? Those are the that's the area we have to get to if we want to you know keep Kawhi Leonard, right? Yeah. I think that's almost a blessing also because if we don't reach that point, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's the probably the smoothest move for the Toronto Raptors just to blow it up if we don't reach the conference finals with this core roster? Mm-hmm. Cuz the so I think that you know this report that came out that you know cuz we've talked we speculated mostly on this pod about you know what what will he do? But going back to just the pure report, right? I think this is just the most blessed thing that the, we can hear as Raptors fans cuz he'll want to leave if you know the team just isn't up to par basketball wise, but we think it is. And, you know, if it is, he's willing to stay. And if he isn't, the Raptors can just blow it up and, you know, hopefully build for a new core. Yeah. No, that's exactly it. It's a failed season. If they can't at least get to the, to the conference finals with Kawhi Leonard, and then essentially the exact same team that they had last season, that would mean that they would have gone from the first seed to a team that's just absolutely garbage. And if, and it, yeah, if all these pieces can't come together to be at least, at least mm-hmm. a, a conference finals uh, team, then there's no point. The Masai Ujiri has had his vision completely wrong, and they might as well start again. They might mm-hmm. as well get a new GM. They might as well get the new, the new coaching staff. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe not a new GM. I love Masai Ujiri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But it's an interesting conversation. It's good that uh, you know. It's good that we hear this this news. It has me excited. It has you excited. It should have all Raptors fans excited. Um, quick point on Danny Green. He has a new podcast called Inside the Green Room. I don't know if you've heard about it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's quite hilarious. But he says the same thing. So on his on his first podcast, he says, you know, obviously it's a nice city. Obviously it's a bit colder and the taxes might be tough, but it's close to home. Really good team in the East. Uh, and then he goes on. He talks about. Um, how you know all the guys have extreme, extremely high defensive potential. How you know how excited he is to play on the team. How his role is going to be just to convince Kawhi to buy into the system, to you know enjoy playing basketball again, to enjoy playing for the Toronto Raptors. And I think if you know he has Danny Green on his side that starts enjoying the team, if he has the rest of the guys enjoying the team, it's a good situation. It's the most that the Raptors can do. And who knows? They might even they might even hire on. Some other friend to the coaching staff or something before the season, uh, the the preseason is over. Yeah, and uh, so with all this, you know, talk about the Raptors, you know, wanting to support Kawhi and build a team around him, 
one thing that we it's coming out now that we didn't really have knowledge of prior and almost builds on the fact that Danny Green has been, you know, just a gigantic, not just basketball wise, but he might be the steal of the, the off season off the court wise. Cause the Spurs didn't necessarily want to include him at the start, mm-hmm. but apparently Danny Green is one of Kawhi Leonard's best friends in the NBA, yep. right? He's one of the best teammates that he's had. So Danny Green, just to get an insight of what Kawhi Leonard wants, it's really awesome just to hear Danny Green speak on it. And the fact that he's bought in to the Toronto Raptors, as you know, you just mentioned, and he's going to try and bring Kawhi along and get him integrated, I think that's just another awesome... It's just been a great week for hearing Kawhi Leonard news and all that that sort of stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. Listen to the podcast if you're interested. It's 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 all right. <laughs> it's no Raptors Digest yeah. podcast, but uh, if you want to hear Danny <laughs> Green talk about stuff inside the green room. Yeah, we'll have to get him on a Raptors Digest <laughs> We'll Digest start messaging pod. him now, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, let us know what you guys think about all this Kawhi Leonard news. It's, you know, me and Riker are excited. Let us know what you guys think. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. You're the best for making it this far. Ciao. Cheers. Hasta luego.